worthy of every song we could ever sing. And you're worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. And you're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Are you worthy of every breath we could ever breathe? We live for you. Oh, we live for you. You're holy, holy. There is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and leave me in your love to those around me.
sweat has impossible ever stopped you Friday's disappointment Sunday's empty too said sweat has impossible ever stopped you
Come on. God is so good. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You did not leave us. You did not forsake us. You sent the Holy Spirit into the earth to live in the believer, to convince the world they're in need of a Savior, to convict us of sin. We thank you, Lord. We have a guide. We have a comforter. We have a helper. I thank you for it. Come on, I want you to bow your heads. I say this all the time. I don't know every heart in the room. I don't know every heart of people that are watching. Listen, we've got people watching from all over. Some on the other side of the world. All across this nation. People are giving their lives to Jesus. Here's what I want you to understand. Giving your life to Jesus does not mean you'll have a perfect life. What it does mean is you're accepting the redeeming power of God into your life. Understanding that as a human being, you're created in the image of God. And that Jesus gave his life away so that we could have life with God. Jesus was resurrected the third day after they buried him. And that same power, when you accept what Jesus did for you, that same power works a resurrection on the inside of you. It brings to life the real you. Jesus died for the whole world. So whether you're in this room or you're watching online in a room somewhere else, in a car, on the side of the road or under a bridge, I want you to know that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come down out of heaven, walked through this fallen world, wrapped in skin just like we, we are, Yet he never sinned, not one time. Then he got on the cross where the guilty are supposed to be. All of humanity is in that guilt. And Jesus died there to redeem mankind. So my plea to you today is this. Give your heart to Jesus follow God that's it that's what we're supposed to do as people so if you're in this room right where you're at you don't have to walk up here if you say pastor I need to accept Jesus as my Savior today or you may say you know what I did that when I was a younger person but I haven't lived for God I really I just kind of did it I haven't really lived for God at all but I want to come to God today and live for Him. Come on, if that's you in this room, I want you to just put your hand up and say, will you pray with me? Thank you. Who else? Come on, don't be shy about it. Because I assure you, Jesus was not bashful when He hung in public so we could be free. You'd say, I've done so many wrong things. You haven't done so many that he didn't die for your forgiveness. Now out there online, you say, preacher, it's me. I wanna, I wanna give my life to God today or I simply just wanna come back to God today. And in a moment, I'm gonna lead these people in a prayer and I want you to pray that prayer right out loud, right out of your mouth, mean it right out of your heart. The prayer doesn't save you, but the faith is what connects you to the grace of God. 
You see, the grace of God made this moment available for you. Take it and run with it and live a life that God dreamed up for you. Come on, everybody in this room, pray this prayer. Come on, right out there online, if it's you, come on, you say it right out loud. Say, Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I connect to you by your holy power, by the Spirit of God. I thank you for what Jesus did for me. I believe that I am forgiven that I am a child of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, there are going to be some ways pop up on your screen that you'll see you'll be able to connect with us. Please do that so we can help you. Listen, you may be saying, well, I'm, I'm in California or Colorado or North Carolina or it's okay we can mail you something we would we just want to help you get started in the process and wherever you're watching from I want to encourage you to find a church in your area that's preaching the Word of God that has a pastor in it that has a backbone and get there serve there love there and find out who you are there. Amen? Amen. Listen, we love you and we're praying for you. I, I'm thankful you're joining us today. I'm thankful for all of you that came out today. Uh, it's Listen, God's doing great things. Amen. You can't look around the room and see empty chairs and think God's not doing anything because it's not true. He is doing great things in this earth. Amen. I'm telling you, folks, God is doing great things. Is there a reformation happening in the church? <laughs> you better believe it. Oh, you better believe it. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. And I can tell you this. I looked at, I looked at some people the other day, and I, I said, I'm not looking for a bunch of people who can just show up. Listen, I'm looking for people that drink like this that keep their eye on what's going on, that actually pay attention to what's going on and don't get swallowed up by all the fear that's flying around in the air right now. Cause it is, I'm gonna tell you, fear is a much bigger virus than this Corona mess. You say, well, I thought it's Corona. Are you a Corona denier? Oh no. I know it's real, but I also know cancer's real. I also know AIDS is real. I also know hepatitis is real. I also know all this other stuff is real. And it has never stopped me one time from preaching the gospel. It has never stopped me from praying for people, ever. And we don't, listen, we don't have a good time God. We've got an all the time God and an all the time gospel. So, well, preacher, aren't there people from here that have been diagnosed with it? Yes. Yeah. But I can tell you this, as I survey the landscape, many have been diagnosed with fear. And that's a fact. But it won't stop them from going to the grocery. It won't stop them from going to Walmart. It won't stop them from going to Rural King. It won't stop them from going to Home Depot. It won't stop them from going to Lowe's. It won't stop them from going to the gas station. It won't stop them from going everywhere else. But they'll make all kinds of excuses not to come to the house of God and be fed and be fellowshiped with others, which is what we're commanded to do in Scripture. And if you're watching online and you say, well, I'm just being cautious. Well, I can tell you this, fear can masquerade itself as wisdom and caution. And that's what it's done to this entire nation. 63% of the churches in this country are still shut down right now. 63%. What do you think that's doing to the fabric of a nation? 37% are open. And of those 37%, the majority of them are at 30% attendance. What do you think that does to the fabric of a nation founded on the Word of God? I challenge every one of you, 
every one of you watching online, you crack open a history book and you find out what happens to a nation that forsakes the ways of God and bows to people who are godless. You watch what happens. They'll burn your Bibles in the streets. They'll burn your churches to the ground. They'll take your children. They'll pillage. They'll take whatever they want. And if you think it can't happen here, you are fooling yourself. They said it couldn't happen in Romania and it happened, it happened overnight nearly. 80 people changed an entire nation overnight. And it became a socialist communist country that quick. I've said it and I've said it and I've said it and obviously it bears repeating. If you think for one second, and I'm talking to everybody that's watching too, if you think for one second that you're looking at a pastor, a preacher that's going to lay down and roll over, let me help you. It ain't ever going to happen. And I'm not saying this out of anger. I'm saying this because 20 plus years ago, you better hear what I'm saying and I'm telling you, everybody in this room better listen up and listen close. 20 something years ago, I walked down an aisle and I got down on my knees and I gave my life to Jesus. I didn't give my life to fear. I didn't give my life to the government. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And a few years later, let's say it was about six years later, sitting in my bathroom floor in Midway, Kentucky, you can't find it on a map, so don't look. I looked to heaven because I knew that God was telling me, this is what you're doing, son. You're going to preach the gospel. And I looked to heaven. I said, I'll do whatever you want. I'll go wherever you want me to. I don't care where it's at. I'm telling you, folks, I literally prayed over every country on the map. I'm not in this for a title. I'm not in this for a pat on the back. And if every one of you walked out the door right now, you know what I'll be doing? Preaching to an empty room like every seat in it's full and like there's standing room only because I'm not called to, to pat your back and live off of your opinions. I'm not called to live off of your opinions and I can tell you this, I will not die by your criticism. So to all the critics that think I'm reckless, You've got a right to your opinion. Let me tell you something. Because I know some of you are watching online. And I, saw, I know some of you have been out running your mouth about how reckless we are. Well, let me tell you something. And you can come to my face and talk to me. I'm fine with that. Now I might be getting out of the spirit a little bit, but I'll just tell you. I'm a grown man. who makes grown man decisions. And if you can't come to the house of God because of fear, then you need to lock yourself in a closet and go nowhere. Because I'm going to tell you, death is at every turn. You could die in a car wreck. A boulder could fall out of the sky and kill you. I mean, it's like people die. One in one, die. But I've chose to live and declare the works of the Lord. So, some of you watching may say, well, I ain't ever coming back. Well, be blessed. Be blessed. Some of you in this room say, I'm never coming back. Be blessed. I'm not mad at you. I'll still love you. I'll still speak to you in town, though you'll try to hide from me. Oh, it happens, trust me. But I'm a, little, I'm a little bit over this whole I'm going to run around and say everything about everybody but I won't have enough guts to come to their face. I'm a little over it. 
I'm a little over it. We didn't do that before we come to Jesus. How come we do it now? It's called gossip. And where there is no wood, the fire goes out. You say, but it's real. People are dying. Yeah. And the CDC quietly whispered. Oh, they don't want to come out and say it because it doesn't fit the narrative. That of the 153,000 people that they said died of COVID, it's actually 9,200. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that, oh great, only 9,200. No, no, no. What I, the point I'm trying to make is this. You're either going to believe the Bible or you're going to believe what the media pumps in your head. That's the truth. They quietly released a statement because they don't want the American public to do what the American public did 200 and something years ago when we the people. Let me tell you something. You, people are going to have to get back to understanding what this country started on. Amen. So are you getting political? <laughs> yeah. What if they take Forget all that. I don't care what they think they can take. They can't take anything. And they're not going to take. They're taking nothing. They're taking nothing. We're building the kingdom. I'm here on an assignment from another place. And so are you. And I'm going to tell you, we need to start acting like it. Amen. Amen. Hey everyone, if you've recently made a decision to follow Christ, we want to congratulate you. So, what do you do now? Simply text the word decision to the number on your screen so we can send you some information to stay in touch with you. We believe it doesn't matter where you've been in life, only where you're going, so welcome. Our hope is that you truly come to know God, find freedom from your past, and discover your purpose so that you can go out and make a difference. As we enter into the message portion of our service, we ask that you extend the courtesy of quiet to those around you being ministered to. We believe you're here for a purpose and that God has something specifically He wants to say to you. Our hope is that you leave here encouraged and closer to Him than ever before. So now, let's get ready to enjoy and receive God's Word. Quiet. Well, hunting teachers. Uh... You be very quiet. I'm hunting prayer warriors. Be very quiet. I'm hunting someone to check in my kids. Be very quiet. I'm hunting a snow cone. 
Be very quiet. I'm hunting diaper changers. Be very quiet. I'm hunting you. Hi, I'm Stephanie Vinson, Kids Director here at Life in Christ Church, and I have a fun opportunity for you. I need a few team members in the kids' building. So if you're looking for an opportunity to serve, want to be a part of a great team that makes the difference in the lives of children, come see me in the kids' building. I promise you won't regret it. I'll get you, you asquee wabbits. Ah. That video's awesome. Oh, yeah, one other thing I forgot. Um, a lot of people have, you know, said, well, the contact tracing says it's all coming from here. Well, it's... I don't think it's a coincidence that they would say that because my guess is all those people have been to the same grocery store. I mean, we're going to have to use this and think. You understand? We live in a small community. I get it. People want to talk. But I have a right to open my mouth too. Amen. Amen. So, if you say, that's a little stout, well, buckle up, because I'm going to tell you, between now and November 3rd and November 4th, COVID won't exist. Yeah. All right, I'll be nice. <laughs> so you said, yes, sir, thank you, Jesus. I know you're with me. You can't get out of this. <laughs> the title this morning is The Wedding Band. Now, obviously you see we have the baptistry out. We were going to do baptisms first and second service, and we decided we'll just do them all the second service. Uh, but I still want to talk about this because I think it's important for you to understand because there could be some of you in here that you really you need to get baptized, like you've gotten saved, but you've never been baptized. And so... It's important to know that that's part of following Jesus. I mean, if Jesus did it, I'm pretty sure it's important we do it. So um, I still want to talk about that. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, my Lord, are you having baptisms with all this going on? Yeah. Yes. I'm telling you right now, I'd walk in a TB tent somewhere if they had a thousand people in it that was dying of tuberculosis and pray for all of them if that's what I was supposed to do. Do you understand? We don't have a good time gospel. And I've been preaching this all week to me and Sue. <laughs> She's probably like, this is part eight of a one part series. <clears throat> The Wedding Band is the title. Let's turn to Mark 8, 27 through 38. Now Jesus and his disciples went out to the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And on the road he asked his disciples saying to them, Who do men say that I am? Now where they're going is a place of pagan worship. Like it's like all these idol gods are worshipped where they're going. And he's taking his disciples there to find out their heart and to teach them something. So they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elijah and others one of the prophets. The reason they're saying that is they, in that uh, region and in the people, they believed in reincarnation. So a lot of people believed Jesus had come back as somebody else. These Okay? Just understand when Jesus was here, everything wasn't perfect. <laughs> it was still a fallen world then. Okay? He said to them, but who do you say, who do you, you're my followers, who do you say I am? Peter answered and said to him, you are the Christ. Then he strictly warned them that they should tell no one about him. Like, don't, don't spread this just yet. <laughs> 
And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Now how many of you know if you're spending all this time with somebody and you're close to somebody and you're eating meals with them all the time and you're hanging out with them all the time and he starts telling you this, you're like, hey, that's a little drastic, don't you think? He spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, get behind me, Satan. He wasn't calling Peter the devil. But it was that spirit that was talking through Peter trying to get, you understand? For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. In other words, you're more focused on what men can do than what God can do. I mean, do we, do we still have a God of miracles? Yes or no? Okay, then we, we need to kind of turn our attention to the God of miracles. When he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, uh, put up, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot I had another one. For, who, for whoever is ashamed of me in my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Now put up Luke 9, please. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Following Jesus is a, uh, let's say, a progressive relationship. Meaning, it's not just a one-time prayer and then we're off to do whatever. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. No, it's not that. Because, 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 because. <laughs> now, I used to could do the cowardly lion voice, but I haven't heard it in a while, so I don't think I can do it right now, so I won't attempt it. But it was funny. So, let, let him... Let him or them, we can say it like that, them, people, anybody, deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. So daily we are to follow Jesus. It's a daily uh, thing here, okay? It's a daily relationship. It's like my relationship with Sue. It's daily. I, I didn't, we didn't walk down an aisle uh, in 1991 October 19th, come on somebody I remembered, hallelujah. <laughs> I didn't say I do then and then let her know, hey, I, if I change my mind, I'll let you know. <laughs> no, we've daily been working on our marriage relationship, our covenant relationship. We're 29 years into it. We're still working on our marriage relationship. Thank God for that, that we made it this long. Some people didn't think we were going to make it five minutes. And was it hard? Have we had tough times? Oh, you bet. I mean, a lot of them. But here's the thing. It's called a commitment. It's called, I'm, I'm here to serve you. She's, I'm here to serve. So I'm here to serve Jesus. It's a commitment. It's a covenant commitment that we've made to follow Jesus. That's it. The, come on. A lot of us come up in backgrounds where they would, you know, t turn to whatever page in the hymnal and they would sing, I have decided. Right? 
I mean, it's a great song. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. And then we would repeat it, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. It was inspired by a Hindu man and his family. Over 200 years ago, this family in a Hindu village gave their life to Jesus. So the uh, village leaders brought them out into public to have them renounce Christ or they would kill them. They said, renounce Christ or we'll kill you and your family. He said, oh no, I have decided to follow Jesus. So they killed his children. They asked him again. He said, no, no, I have decided to follow Jesus. There is no turning back. They killed his wife. And as they were getting ready to take his life, he said, the cross before me, the world is behind me. So when you sang that song, you were singing a declaration from a man who found there was no option but to stay the course. And that's what I pray we all find. See, when... When we, our, our goal, our heart, our drive here, we want every human being to know God. Now, a lot of this stuff, a lot of you've heard. Some of you haven't heard it. Some of you watching online haven't heard it. It's important for you to understand we want every human being to know God. But there's more to it. You can know God and sit on a pew your entire life and be bound by the things that caused you to show up at church in the first place. Because let, let's be honest, and I can't see you raise your hand online, but you can comment in the comment section. How, how many of you would be honest? You came to church out of desperation, hoping something would change. So the majority of the people in this room, I'm guessing probably the majority of people watching online, it was break glass in case of emergency. And guess what? God met you at your point of desperation. The problem is some people only, only went that step. They never went any further. They never found any kind of freedom in anything. And so they knew God and they know God now to some degree, but they're not living for God. That's why we want people to find freedom. If you come into this place or you're watching online and you're addicted to something and you give your heart to Jesus, we want you to find freedom from that addiction because you'll never be able to serve God in the capacity you were created to if you stay in that addiction. So it's no God. That's why we preach like we preach. That's why we give altar calls like we do because we want people to know God. But then we want people to find freedom. That's why we preach the liberation of the gospel. Come on, the gospel is liberating. Amen. Then, once you do that, you'll be able to discover the purpose you were put on this earth for. And then, you get to fulfill the great commission and go out and make a difference. Because all of us, everyone in this room and everyone watching online that says, I am a born again Christian, then you have been commissioned to, the, to go to the whole world and preach the gospel. You say, well, I'm not a preacher. Well, you are now. So your life better bear it. Would anybody know that we're Christians if we never opened our mouth or wore the shirt or had a cross on our necklace and on our car and on the house? And the... Jesus was always around a crowd. They would come to see. That's why when you go over in our growth track room, you, you see a world map, and over the top of it, it says, come and see, go and tell. Come and see what? Come and see what God is doing. Go and tell who? The world. Go tell the world. Go tell everybody what Jesus is doing. Well, I don't know what he's doing. Well, what's he doing in your life? Then to the congregation, we would say, come and join us. Come and be a part of what we're doing in 
the earth. And then there's the committed. Committed people come here to grow. Then there's the core, people who come and serve. See, we say it like this, serve one, set one. But that's two services. Oh, I know, I can count. Serve one, set one. Serve one, set one. Serve somewhere, then set one. But that's going to take up a lot of my morning. I have decided. Serve one, set one. Serve one, set one. If you serve and then set and take in, it'll be like, man, this Sunday was awesome. I got to serve and I got to watch people come to Jesus and I was a part of it because I was standing at the door when they came in. They didn't know where to go and they had kids and I directed them to the children's building and their kids went over there. All three of their baby, all three of their kids, they had little ones, you know, and all three of them got saved in an altar call over there during worship and I looked around and there the mama was with tears streaming down her face and she got saved and, you know, Pastor, I just felt like I was a part of that. Well, you were. You were. You were. Now, we can sit around like knots on logs and hope somebody gets born again, or we can be a part of helping that happen. Then there's the commissioned. Come and die. Come to Jesus and die to self. That's That's the one. That's the one that gets most people. Because we want what we want and... You know, everybody else can figure it out, right? I mean, come on, it's kind of how it is. Let's go from no commitment to total commitment. From a consumer, a tire kicker, to a contributor. I can tell you what happened during all this uh, pandemic mess. There's a lot of tire kickers that won't ever go back to the church they were in because they weren't committed. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. If you've been here two or three years and you're still kicking the tires, I don't know what's up with you. Honestly. Like, I, I mean, come on, you can buy a car on a snap decision, but you can't decide I'm going to plant my family in a place that they can grow and learn about Jesus and learn who they are in Christ. It takes you three, four, five years to figure that out, it ought to take you three or four months and some people can walk through the door and they know. So I, I've talked to many people and look, we're not a perfect church if you're sitting out there going, I found the perfect church. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. So don't even think that's possible. But I've talked to people who have come here one time and they told me right out of their mouth, they said, when I walked through the door, I knew I was home. Well, they didn't dilly-dally around. They said, what do I need to do now, Pastor? I mean, I know this is where I'm supposed to be. I prayed, asked God, and guess what? He talks to me. And when I walked through the door, I knew this was home. I said, your next step is get in the growth track. Well, what's that? Well, you go in the growth track. You'll learn about yourself. You'll learn what we're doing. And then we'll get a place for you to serve. Oh, okay, okay. They go do that. Then guess what? They come out of there and they start serving. It's pretty simple. So what's going to go on here at the end of second service? It's the wedding band of all that I just told you. It's the outward sign to the world that there's been an inward decision. See, this wedding band that I have on my hand, I don't know if you can see it online, but I have one on. This wedding band does not make me married. It lets everyone else know I'm married. Amen. If I just wore it around Sue at home, and then took it off when I went out the door, well, now it wouldn't matter because I'm marked. I can't, it's like, there's no way I could hide it now, you understand? Some people, they'd be around people and they're like, Slip that one ring off. Act like they ain't married. What happens with Christians? Don't even fool yourself. Well, you know, I, when you go to work and everybody's just acting like fools and 
you slip that ring off of your heart. Just throwing it out there. Baptism doesn't save you. This wedding ring doesn't make me married. But it's a sign to everyone else that I am. That I'm in covenant. That I'm in covenant with someone that I have vowed to. We just, we've been going over this a lot here lately in the last month. With some stuff going on per, just personally. No, it's not like we're about to get divorced. So don't anybody go out and spread that rumor. That would be the next thing going around. No, but I looked at Sue a few days ago and I said, you need to listen to me. I made a, I swore an oath to you. That through thick or thin, it don't make no difference. What's going on? I'm here. You need to understand that. She said, I know. See, I swore an oath to Jesus that through thick or thin, and sometimes it's, it's more thin than thick, I'm in. That's it. We say, well, if baptism doesn't save us, I thought, you know, some people have that, that idea, it, you know, well, baptism saves you. Well, it doesn't save you any more than a bath does. It's just an outward show that the dirt on the inside has been washed away. Amen. Now, the mentality of it is this. I have no way out. See, I don't, I don't view, like Sue and I, I have no way out of this. The only way out of this is when six carry me to a hole somewhere. You understand? I have no way out of this. Have you wanted, Pastor, have you ever wanted to quit following Jesus? Multiple times. And you don't have to be brave enough to admit that. But I'm telling you right now, there have been multiple occasions where I thought, is this really worth it? And then I see someone get born again. I'm like, duh. You know, and then the second service when I walk into that tank and all those kids are coming into that tank getting baptized because they gave their heart to Jesus right over there in children's church or some of them watching online. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's worth it. It's worth it. Come on, it's worth it. Come on, when I see your babies getting raised, it's worth it. When I see your family getting healed, it's worth it. It's all worth it. Here's, what, here's the problem with that lies in all of us if we're not cautious. We take our eyes off of him. We get our eyes on the things of men. Listen to me. It will derail you every single time. So this wedding band is a sign to everybody that I'm married that I'm committed. And I've had times where I've had to wave it around so people knew. You understand? There have been moments in life where I'm like, you know, it's like pointing with this hand, kind of woo-hoo. Just so you know, <laughs> it's a no-go zone. So there's some things in my life because of the commitment I've made to Jesus, it's a no-go. It's just a no-go. It it's like, well, what about, no, that's a no-go. Oh, it's a no-go. No, I don't do that. It's just a no-go. I mean, it's like, I don't, I don't want to commit adultery on Jesus. I mean, the book of James, read it. You adulterers and adulteresses, come on. I mean, check the Bible. It's pretty plain. Romans 10, 9 and 10. 
So if you're watching online, you're wondering, well, okay, if, if that doesn't save me, how do I get saved? If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. That's it. That's it in a nutshell right there. That's how it starts. By a simple confession out of your mouth of the belief in your heart, it starts you on the journey of following Jesus. That's it. You mean I don't have to fill out a form and jump through hoops and do calisthenics? and No. No, believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. Here's the thing. Once you do that, follow. Follow. Right? Have you ever played follow the leader? That's huh? kind of what we're talking about here. Follow Jesus. Now, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 Y'all know this. We read it here all the time. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. That's what baptism symbolizes. The fresh and new has come. Do you know in the, in the way back, way, way, way on back in the old days, when they would, when they would uh, go to get baptized, they would have on uh, their clothes that they wore, cl real nice, clean clothes, and then the, they would put on uh, clothes over the top of them that were filthy rags. And they would put them down in the water, and while they were under there, they'd take those filthy rags off, and they'd stand up with those clean clothes on, and those filthy rags would float down the river. What were they doing? It was a, well, you couldn't do it now. The EPA would land on you in a helicopter, but, it, but you know, it's just, you understand. As, though, as those dirty rags were floating down the river, it was a sign to the world that was looking on. I'm clean. Not because of anything I've done. It's because of Jesus. And my sin represented in those clothes has been washed away by the blood of Jesus. Come on, I'm telling you folks, we serve a great God. Amen. Who has not stopped loving people. Who has not stopped performing miracles. Look around. Miracles are happening everywhere. Amen. Amen. They happen in this house all the time. All the time. We see things like that happen all the time. We watch it happen on a continual basis. Don't run out on God when things get a little rough. Amen. Now is not the time to bow to anything else the love and the power of God. Amen. 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 Give God a hand clap. I love you. I remember when Erin um, was just a little girl and, and we, talk, we talked to her about that song and we talked to her about if anybody ever said you if anybody, if anybody ever told you, I'm going to kill you unless you denounce God. Or if they said they were going to kill us. We taught her at a very young age, I have decided to follow Jesus. I remember her as a little girl saying, but what if they tell me they're going to kill you? I said, they're probably going to do it anyway. But you never ever denounce God I said you look to the Father and you say I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back and I can remember teaching her that at a young age she still remembers it to this day you know we have to teach our kids 
It may come with the price, but we follow Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, the cross always before us, the world always behind us. And we haven't regretted telling her that. Oh, you told her, we told her when she was little, because we had to have the discussion. You need to have the discussion with your children. They need to know. We don't turn our back on God because he's never turned his back on us. Amen? Amen. Listen, this is the time of service where we get to worship him and our tithe and our offering. It's one of my most favorite times. Pastor Chris and I choose to text to give. And I've told some of you all this story before. When you text to give and you have your volume turned up on your phone, when you hit that send button, it goes zoop. And then it instantly sends you something back to confirm it. And they'll go zoop. And you hit it again, zoop, zoop. And Pastor Chris, if he's ever there at the house, and I'll tell him, I'll go, I'm fixing to pay our tithe. And he goes, okay, turn it up. Because we say blessing going out and blessing coming in. Because that's what God says. God says blessing. Pastor Chris teaches us all the time, the hand of blessing comes down. And you know, there's so many people that have been blessed because of our tithing and our giving. And the Word of God says, give with a generous heart. It's exciting to me because I always think when I tithe and when I give, I think, Lord, what is it you're going to do with this? And I always pray, and Pastor Chris and I have talked about it several times, I'm believing that someone will get saved. I'm believing that we're going to populate heaven and we're going to plunder hell. I believe that some little child is going to get extra food because of this. I believe that a senior citizen is going to get things that they need that they can't get. I believe that someone's life is forever going to be changed. And I believe that children are going to come to know you. Father, bless somebody with this. And I am telling you, it has been incredible what life in Christ church has been able to do and the people's lives that are being blessed all over the world because of tithing and giving and I know because I hear the testimonies time and time again that your life's being changed because of it too amen father I thank you for every tither every giver I thank you father God that you take this seed that we're giving to you. And I thank you, Lord, that lives are being changed, forever changed. Father God, I believe that we are building the kingdom for your sake. And I give you praise for that. And I thank you, Father, that you bless every household in the mighty name of of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you joined us online today, we are so glad that you did. I tell you this all the time, and I'm going to continue to say it. I cannot wait to see you here face to face. I know that we have many people watching, several from right here close in this area, but we have people from all over the United States, all over the world that are watching us, and I just believe that someday we're going to get to see you face to face on this side of heaven. And so I can't wait for that day, but until then, I just want to say, God bless you, and I hope you have a great day. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at Life in Christ Church. We are so glad that you tuned in, and we would love for you to join us here at any of our in-person services. For more information about us here at Life in Christ Church, check out our Facebook page or our website. We hope the rest of your day is blessed, and remember, it's not where you've been in life, only where you're going.